but so many of you on the spiritual journey still question why you had to get so damaged in coming. And again, the idea that you got damaged is a belief system. So I think we all collectively believe in this metaphysical group, at least this group, that creator, in order to know thyself, broke into infinite numbers of pieces. And then those pieces broke into infinite numbers of pieces. And those pieces broke up an infinite number of pieces, just like your family tree. Okay. And at the end of the day, our, all of our trees connect somehow, some way, because we are all part of that one full tree, the tree of life. Okay. So looking at it like that. Now you are God incarnated. Why would your story be any different? You came here in the third dimension to get completely split apart. Completely. That was going to be the way that you knew yourself. All different aspects. And some of those pieces were going to excel in certain directions. And some of those pieces were going to become small and shriveled. Some of those pieces were going to become evil or so angry and lost that they forgot themselves. And yet it's still you because you are acting as the creator here in the third dimensional world. So in order for you to even have a desire, you had to experience a split. You had to experience a contrast of what you actually are because you are all that is, okay? And so if you wanted to come down to the third dimensional and express that physically, and you would need that desire, desire is your mirror, Okay, it is your engine, it is your fuel, and it is also that GPS. So desire mixed with using the mirrors is how, after your family completely splits you apart the first seven years, you find yourself back together. Now, I didn't do the demonstration that I really wanted to do, but the, I'm probably gonna make a TikTok video about this, but so like, let, let's say, let's take a teacup. Okay. Teacup has a purpose. Okay. It's delicate. And it is like, when you look at it, you know exactly what it is. All right. Now let's break it in. Let's say 25 pieces, 25 pieces. Okay. And now it's completely unusable. Maybe there might be a little like shelf, like a little piece or the handle is there, or maybe even some of the plate is there, but it is not now a usable teacup. But with all the pieces, it still is a teacup. It is just now completely fractured. And so this is where we come up with the idea that we are worth less. Because now we're not able to be used in the capacity as creators as we thought we would. Because now we cannot use just one piece to manifest a reality. Because all the other pieces now have contrast have desire to basically become whole, but sometimes the further away the split becomes, the more it identifies with the split than it does to the whole, okay? So like a, sh a little shred of the teacup that you wouldn't even know where it fit at all, like it doesn't even look like part of a teacup anymore, just like a little shred of glass, it's not gonna think it belongs to the whole, it's gonna feel like it doesn't belong anywhere. And so you are going to have some of these pieces that feel literally worth less. Now, the handle might be like, I go to something, right? I know I fit with something here and I have this desire to be fulfilled. Your cup full, right? Now, those of us who are working towards becoming whole, the reason why we want to be whole is because when you are a usable teacup, you have a purpose and now God can glory you, fill your cup, and demonstrate all of creation through you. So it's like the life force energy that you're lacking. So what we do is in childhood, we get fractured on purpose. Okay. And what I've seen in 13 years of coaching, the more fractures you have, the bigger your purpose. Okay. You didn't come here for just, you know, oh yeah, I know exactly what I am. Right. You had to basically get completely lost to discover, oh, 
I want to be whole. I desire to be whole. And through that desire, it becomes magnetizing, which means now you're going to be magnetizing yourself to your other pieces. But as you get closer to your other pieces, it is not going to feel good to your ego. Because as you get close to your pieces, those pieces hurt. They are worthless. That one's guilty. That one's shame over there. And you're going to be saying, I want to be whole. I want to be whole. And you're meditating and you're praying and you're magnetizing yourself to these pieces now. You're no longer running away from these pieces. And so when we had this big kind of um, the illumination, it really, really sat in in 2023, 2023, where it was like the veil is gone. We start learning all this stuff about Hollywood and we start learning what's going on underneath the surface. And we start looking at our favorite people in the world. We're doing weird stuff. How is that different than you? You may not be that type of weird, but you're still doing weird stuff that you don't want nobody to know about. And what happened with us is our veil got lifted too. So we could no longer hide the splits. Now, all of our splits are obvious because the splits are, I can't take care of myself. The splits are, I don't know how to do this. The splits are, I feel worthless. The splits are, I don't deserve love. But see, when you are hiding underneath the shadow, then you could build a false persona and a mask. You can adapt into your masculine energy, ladies, and you can become a man. But see, now that we're going back to our origin state, which is like, okay, source is like, great, everybody split apart. Now, everything come back together so we can finish the ascension. That's what ascension is, is becoming whole part of the one. Now, as you become part of your whole, you will be magnetized to other people that are part of their whole. So it's like, like attracts light. The more you become like the teacup, the more teacups you'll find. The more you stay fractured, the more fractured people you find. And that is literally just as simple as I can explain that. So when we get on the spiritual journey, sometimes we learn coping mechanisms to deal with this idea of oneness. I think that someone who is trying to become oneness with universal consciousness right now, that's a shadow. Where we want to be is oneness with ourselves so we know where we fit. So someone who's just trying to be like, oh, this is all a dream and it's all illusion and none of this matters. Now that does help sometimes the inner child say, this is just a dream. This is just a dream because I know I've used that one. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> your physical body is having a real experience. And there is a real inner child in there that is truly fractured, that is terrified. And so if we bulldoze and we spiritually bypass this, then we search for oneness and all we're doing is fracturing ourselves into a billion more pieces, which is going to make it harder to find in the next lifetime. Because the reason why you start where you start is you start with your shreds and you have to work back up to the, to the bigger parts of the teacup. And so wherever you were, where, whatever your mosaic was in your last life is where you were born into. So if you were kind of a teacup, then you might have more awareness of your purpose here. OK, the people who literally came in just pieces, they are literally like, I don't even know what I'm here because they can't look at their energy and know. But us, I believe that we were always empathetic and we we're always sensitive. So our purpose was service, service to be of help. That's how we survived. That's how we became the scapegoat. That's how we became the helper. That's how we became invisible. That's how we turned our volume down. But as you turn your volume down, you are also unable to see these splits. Okay, so now you're being forced into reconciliation. On the flip side, you're having a really contradictive experience because on one part, you're asking for this every day, but you keep thinking that this is going to be easy. Every time you ask to be more of yourself, to be more abundant, to be more loving, to be more worthy, well, then your higher self is going to put you in the room with your shreds, put you in the room with your pieces and say, this is what you need to become whole. You're magnetizing. So on one end, you're begging for the magnetism to find these pieces. And on the other side, when you find them, you're running away. 
because you're going to find them in the toxic boyfriend. You're going to find them in the money problem because that's where your vibration is on that area. And so another thing about law of attraction community that is just going to go tits up pretty soon because they're going to figure this out is that every one of your shreds is vibrating. Every single one of them is calling to the universe that which they believe they are. So if I have a little tiny shred that feels absolutely worthless, abandoned, rejected, disgusting, okay, that piece, I don't care how small, is still vibrating. And it is now putting that story into the law of attraction. So maybe there's a bigger part of me that's doing affirmations and I'm, I'm working on myself. And so I'm putting out there that I am worthy and that I am deserving. And because I feel like this piece might be bigger, okay, that it's going to influence everything. But that isn't how law of attraction works. It works on like attracts like. So it becomes an algorithm. Just like if you're on Facebook, you're going to see things that you're thinking about that you've never told anybody about. You're going to see things you don't want. You're going to see things you do want. And what is at the bulk of your feed is going to be your dominant vibration, which might not be who you are praying yourself to be. It might be the negativity. Because if I'm saying I'm abundant, the piece of me that is not abundant is going to be the loudest because it's trying to find you. It's trying to magnetize itself to you. It's like, oh, you want to be abundant? You need me because I'm lack of abundance. And if I come in and become part of your vibration, well, then we'll be more abundant. And so what happens is every time that energy starts to get close, it's a manifestation of the opposite. And then we go, no, 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 I don't want that. And so then we re-push that away. We re-abandon. We refracture. And so now we're splitting that tiniest little piece into more shreds so that we can get away from the feeling. So where we've been this year is we're realizing that in order for us to truly be creators, and again, you, whoever the dominant driver of your vehicle has free will. And we have learned through practical experience here that 80% of the time your ego is driving the car, which means your ego has free will. And what does your ego want? Your ego wants you to stay fractured and separate so it can have a purpose to keep you focused on the outside. So the more you magnetize in, the more you work from the inside. And how you're going to find these pieces is not through stories, through mind, through thinking. It's going to come through the magnetism of sensation. You're going to magnetize these, these fractures in through sensation. They, they, some of them are nonverbal. Some of these fractures happen before three years old. Some of these happen in the womb. So they're not going to be able to tell you the story of where they are. So somebody who's chewing you out at the grocery store, you may not have any idea of how this is a mirror, and yet it is. And so it could be the way this person's cologne smelled, the way you smell. And so you're all playing this, basically this game of hot and cold and hide and seek to find your fractured parts, but your ego, every time you start to get close to a fracture, your ego tells you that you are in danger and that this is not right. And you're getting further away from abundance because it's looking at circumstantial evidence versus the sensation of closeness. And so if you look at the sensation of, I have obviously lack or I wouldn't be asking for abundance. So now I start vibrating more lack in, which is me, so I can alchemize. I start to run away from lack. What am I doing wrong? I'm getting this wrong. And he goes like, yay, I get to drive. Because now she thinks that something is wrong with her because she's getting closer to these fractures. So you're going to be a spiritual surgeon. And you're going to be going inside calling these fractures to you. And why this is going to save your nervous system and shave years off your life is because you're not going to have to find these fractures in the trigger. The trigger is going to throw you completely out of balance. It's going to direct your focus completely outside of you. And it is going to then create you to fixate on a story rather than how you feel. So if you can bring yourself to the trigger through sensation then you're going to be able to do everything internally, completely 100% safe, build a relationship with yourself and fix the physical body all at the same time. Because if we go, well, you know, whatever I need to fix will just be magnetized to me. 
you are guarded and defensive because you have missing pieces. You're not whole. You don't really truly have a force field. So you're going to be out there in the world getting your nervous system blown out, getting your feelings hurt, focused on the outside. And then when you talk to me for 15 minutes, you want to tell me the story. But so and so and so and so like your story is any different than any of our other stories. It's just a story that was the best possible thing that could have happened to you because it brought you to your fracture. Now, what are you going to do with the fracture? Okay. There's like, literally, this is what St. Germain told me is after the age of eight, there are no new fractures. They're just refractures. Because the, the way that the subconscious brain works or the mind works, and then the brain works in harmony with that is it becomes hard drive. And then everything after that is more of like soft software that we can plug in and out. And the way that you change the hard drive is through the subconscious and the subconscious does not speak in words. It speaks in sensation. It speaks in feeling. So the only way to truly change the blueprint of an original trauma is to go into the original trauma. Now, this is actually what the military PTSD did for their soldiers before Rockefeller got a hold of everything. And what they would do is if someone went off to war and, you know, they were in an explosion or something like that, a group of, you know, SEALs or medics or, you know, these kind of like ranger type of like military guys that are just trained to be calm in danger would take that soldier back into a simulation of that environment. Except they would be there holding space for him or her and they person who was re-experiencing that explosion, there would be space held, they would be warm, they would be safe. And so they could have, they could bring themselves back to the center of that trauma and they could recalibrate is I am not in danger. That was the way it turned off. Now, a lot of people are doing this with um, medicinal medicine. Because ayahuasca is going to bring you to the scene of the crime. It's going to bring you into the pain. And ayahuasca is obviously like a spirit guide. And so if it's done with the right shaman, you are you can make pretty big progress. And I think with some people who come in, okay, and have no clue of what their purpose is, especially men, that might be a really good route for them. Because men are, I don't know who I am without a purpose. Okay. Women, our purpose is to be a woman. OK, until we become a man and then we're like, oh, this sucks. We got to do both because it doesn't like we just get to be men. We have to be both. So in that idea that that is working, unless you think now the only way I'm going to heal is go do ayahuasca. That's not the purpose of it. But there is a easier, more gentle way that you can recalibrate this by doing what, what I'm calling. It's almost like F squared. OK, because a square is kind of like reality and it's kind of the idea of being fractured, frozen, focused and free. And so this idea is that we all are fractured. I don't care who you are. You could come and tell me. I've had people tell me, oh, I have the best childhood. You're on Earth. You're in hell. OK, you are in a jail cell and you are fractured from yourself. There was no way you were going to be whole in a family that was fractured. OK, because if you came into a family that was fractured, then you're by default going to get fractured because like attracts like and your greatest survival tactic to survive babyhood is to be cared for at whatever means. If you leave a baby on a sidewalk, the chances of it living are not very well. So that baby is going to learn to adapt very quickly to its surroundings to figure out how to exist. Okay, so the way the brain works is the brain is not here for your pleasure. It is here for your survival. And so if your brain is here for survival, it's not, it, it doesn't care about anything other than survival. So what it does is it hides the memories. This is why some of you can't remember certain elements of your childhood. It hides certain memories, but it cannot hide the sensation. It cannot. And the sensation will reside in your field, on one of the layers of your field. Now, what I have seen is that everything can be found inside the body. Every trauma, every trauma, it is a matter if it was nonverbal, it was in the womb, it's in the body, stored in the cellular memory. 
and the subatomic plate. So in this way, and on all the organs, because the cells are in all the organs, it's in, every, it's in everything. So if we want to truly quantum leap, then we're going to go in to find those fractures and become the living magnet by calling those fractures in. Instead of us stumbling around, getting triggered every five minutes, thinking that we're doing something wrong because our affirmations are not working. Your affirmations are working. Your higher self is bringing you to exactly what is going to help complete you. But you may not like the way that looks because you could have abandoned yourself to the point where now you are disgusted by this part of yourself. And that's the part of you you have to fall in love with. Because... You've seen the Japanese teacup, right? Where they use gold to bring it all together. And it's like, you know, it's it's a treasure. Well, your, your love for these broken, hideous parts of yourself are going to create the mosaic. They're going to create the teacup or whatever shape you want. Because the cool thing is, is once you have shattered, you can put yourself out back together however you want. You don't have to be a teacup, okay? You could be something else if you want. But the gold... OK, is going to be the glue that brings all these fractures back together. And so let's say you meet a part of yourself that rejects you or abandons you or, or is disgusting. And you say, that can't be me. Right. I can bring you back and show you exactly how that's you. And again, it's not you. It's your trauma. OK, it's the traumatized version of you. Now, trauma is only trauma when the pain or the separation of whatever you experienced was rejected or abandoned, which means that if you experienced something scary and your mom was there saying, everything's okay, I'm here, I love you, that wouldn't be trauma. But if your mom was supposed to keep you safe and you were hurt by your dad, you were abandoned and rejection and abused. So then how we refracture is that we learn how to be a parent from mom and dad, and then we parent ourselves that way, whether we know it or not. So if dad was like, you know, rub some dirt on it, toughen up, don't feel, don't cry. Well, then that's how you're going to deal with yourself as you get older. And you may be very gentle and kind to other people because you want to be loving, but th the way that they were with you is going to be the way you are with you. So when you have an emotion, if you were taught in your family, that emotions are, they're not survival for you here, then you will restuff them. And this is what I've seen three times. And this is why I'm so passionate this week. I've seen this three times in sessions. Everyone here in this group, this is not your first radio and your spiritual training. You have been at this. Okay. You have spent money on classes. You have read the books. You have done it. Why is it your life not changing? I'm going to tell you why. Because you're doing the work and then you're refracturing yourself. So you are a narcissistic parent, which means that I'm doing the inner child work, but then at that, you know, family event, I just stuffed my feelings. You can't do that. You can't stuff your feelings, ignore and abandon your inner child. And then two days ago, you did inner child work. That is equivalent of me hugging my son, telling him I love him. I'm here for him. I'm not leaving him. And then punching him in the face two days later and abandoning him. That is why your body does not trust you. If you have bodies that won't heal, that's why. Because your body don't trust you. You are not a safe place for your body. Okay? Same goes for money. If you can't get money, it's because... Money, you're not safe with money. You are, you're, you're calling it in and then you're abusive with it. Somehow, I don't know, one of your fractures is, and I know I definitely was doing this, okay? So it's like, we have to own this. First and foremost, 100% like radical honesty with ourselves. Because this ascension is not going to get easier for you until you take full responsibility for your trauma. And you may not even know the, the lengths of it. But remember what St. Germain said a few months ago, you only have to be 51% holistic, 51% of yourself. And then that will create the tipping point source will do the rest. Okay. So you do not have to become the whole teacup. You just have to become 51% of it. 
which means that your responsibility is to find 51% of your fractures and re-magnetize. So the other thing that I noticed this week is that a lot of you are on this spiritual journey and you're seeking and you're studying and you're you're doing the work, right? You're you're studying, but you're you're not doing it. Okay. You're like, you're feeling the dopamine of the example, but that's not the healing work. This is really uncomfortable work. I'm just going to tell you because once you start feeling your feelings, that is actually an amazing feeling when you're feeling them like indirectly, like when you feel your feelings in a trigger, that doesn't feel good because your whole system is in defense. And so it's almost like a woman being raped, right? She's not ready. She's not ready for that penetration of that, of that energy. But if you get yourself into a still state and you talk to your body and you tell your body, we're, we're going to deep dive here and we're going to find these fractures and we're going to become whole. And you are in that loving, open, calm state. Okay. Then your brain will go into theta gently and you'll be able to magnetize that fracture in. And then as you integrate that in, you'll feel the feeling of the trigger, but it won't trigger the ego because it's a sensation you're feeling. You're going to feel like a sick stomach or a contracted throat or, you know, like sometimes it feels frozen. Sometimes it'll feel empty. Like there's so many different sensations and where it is, is the portal. Okay. And so I have created, so you guys know, I had my time travel back in the day, early 2014, I developed something called time travel and it was basically like to regress. But once you regress, you actually change the story for the inner child. So now the energy of the vibration of the inner child is different. Okay. And that is what got me, uh, in order to basically be able to be in front of you guys, because I was horrifically shy and I had way more fractures before then. But see, now where we are is I think that we are looking for bigger pieces and we're looking for smaller pieces. So it's like at this stage of the game, we're looking for those shreds, but we're also looking for like bigger pieces. Okay. Because what we've done is we've like stayed in this mediocre state where you know, you, you haven't found your bigger pieces because that might scare you if you saw your potential and you are totally avoiding your shreds because those are the pieces that don't feel like you at all. They don't feel like they go anywhere. They definitely don't feel like they're, they're have anything to do with your vibration. And yet that's going to be the thing that maybe seals the deal. And so if we can go in there in a non-story trigger and we can get into the body where we can expose the trigger and we can tell the body basically take us to a certain place, the body will take us to what is vibrating the loudest. And it doesn't matter where that is. It doesn't matter if you're triggered over here, but it activates a trigger over here. So this is why we have to let go of the story because you might be triggered about an injustice, okay? And once you take your body into something, it's gonna take you into, you know, rejection. That might not even feel at all like a similar trigger. But that's the one that inner child was trying to get you to look at so you could come in and integrate so you could come back together. And, and so what your what's your story looks like right now is you have no masks that you get to wear anymore. You're fully exposed. OK, just like Hollywood and no, no masks fit anymore. There's no false security anymore. And you're getting triggered, 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 because higher self is like every piece we get, we become whole. And as the wholeness improves, that's going to increase your manifestational ability. That's going to make law of attraction work better for you, not worse. So even a little bit goes a long way from what I'm seeing. So you'll see mirrors start to change rapidly if you work on certain mirrors. So again, if you have the money mirror or you have the relationship trauma, okay, then the only way to fix any mirror is fixing the relationship with yourself. And what I've seen is that you have to literally, from a genuine place, fall in love with yourself.
And another thing I see in the spiritual community is that we're, we're working so hard to fix ourselves because we hate. We're fixing ourselves so much because we, we don't want to be this. That's resistance. That's like me parenting because I want my kid to be prettier. Okay, me parenting nicely because I want my kid to be more successful. Your body will not want any part of that because it's not unconditional love. And so when you are ready to love your body, regardless if you heal, regardless if you get the money, regardless if you fix your relationship, that is when your body is going to come back together in wholeness because it's only love that can fix this. And it has to be the unconditional kind. And when you go into the trigger, okay, you're going to be looking for a feeling, not a story. Zero. So I, I, and I truly believe this. If you are not at ground zero right now, you're not going to do this. If you are not at ground zero, which means if you have still life in that caterpillar, right, your needs are still being met somehow and you can still justify your anger and bitterness, you're not doing this yet. When you get to ground zero, which means all that's left is this integration, there's nothing else that there is for me here where it becomes so boring or you can't pass, you can't create past, you can't get past certain fears and things like that. You're not going to do it unless you are at that ground zero. And so if you look at even 9-11, the two towers that felt was the beginning of the end of duality. That was romantic metaphor, ground zero. And when you get to your ground zero, you are going to be like, Okay, great. Let's go into the dark because that's what you are, a light worker. You're not here to be the light. You're here to go into the dark with your light and into the dark to find yourself, which I've given you hundreds of metaphors over these years of that reconnaissance mission that you're on. Now, again, yes, there are going to be shame, guilt, fear. Okay, they're going to be loss. There's going to be grief. Those are kind of the heat-seeking magnetisms that we can find and I was teaching you guys or reminding you guys a better word on how to love those parts of yourself okay because ultimately where you're going to be working for August okay which is the 8-8 eight, eight portal is you're going to be working with my disappointment and my I'm a disappointment get ready you're about to have your life shattered because your life is a disappointment. Not all of it, but you are not living how you want to live at this age. There are disappointments that you can't get over that you don't believe you can fix. And probably once a week, you feel like a disappointment. So your masculine energy is I'm a disappointment and your feminine energy, I'm constantly disappointed. If there is anyone in this class that can tell me that that's not true for them, speak up. <laughs> I don't care how good your life is, you still run in that program because that's where we are as a collective. Disappointment. The reason why is because you've been taught your whole life to look outside of yourself. And so this is our opportunity to reappoint. So we're going to take the disappointment and we're going to reappoint it. Because the reason we're disappointed is because we have leaned on the world. We have leaned on mom and dad. We've leaned on the spouse. We've leaned on our belief systems. And the chair has been ripped out from under you. And what you thought you could count on. You live in a different world than you lived three years ago. The vibration on planet Earth is completely different than it was three years ago. It is not the same game. So if you're trying to play the same skill set that you did three years ago, it isn't going to work because there's new rules. The rules are when I go without, I go within. Instead of ego, when I go without, I work harder. When I go without, I, you know, I create something new business. I get a loan. I get extra jobs. I give up more of my power. That isn't the game anymore because none of that stuff is working for you if you did not come here to be a slave. If you came here to be a sovereign being, those things will not work for you anymore. Intense codependency will not work for you anymore. All right. Caretaking people and enabling their journey isn't going to work for you anymore. So you're going to have to begin to lean in 
rebuild this relationship with your higher self, with your inner child, and then that energy together with the body, which is the myself, okay? It is where all of the embodiment is stored. So your higher self, your inner child, and all of your fractals are stored in the body. That's why we call it the myself of the me, myself, and I, okay? The me is the one part of you that you think you are. It is the fracture that you lead with as your persona there is. Now, there's three identities in the ego personality because the ego is the inversion of God and God is the Trinity. God is body, mind, soul, right? It is the, it is the ice water steam. Well, ego will never be God. And so what it becomes is victim, perpetrator, hero. And that's where most of us have found our value in the past. In our family, we've been playing the hero of our own story the best we could. So what happens when you're playing the hero, look at that as your spiritual ego. You're doing good, you're rescuing people, you're working hard, you're doing things for free, you know, you're constantly giving, you're playing the hero. And what will happen is the hero mask will fall off and you will drop immediately into victim or perpetrator. And then you'll work your way back up to hero. And then you'll get exhausted and you'll fall back in to victim or perpetrator. So that hero that is not, it's almost like I'm a hero and who's going to save me? When you're not saved, you fall back into the victim and then you have to turn into the perpetrator to survive. And then you work your way back up. And this is going to be the personality of all of your fractures. So the fractures that reside in the lower vibrational uh, emotional codes, like in the below boredom, when it starts to get into desperation and, you know, uh, fear and worry and all that bitterness and resentment. When you drop into that, the persona is the separation of God. And they are going to have those three personalities that they're going to literally Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde based on what they are experiencing to survive. So it's the same energy as a parasite, actually, because the parasite uh, thinks it's the hero because it is it is making its species bigger. But then it's going to play the victim and then it's going to perpetrate. So this is that energy of the lower conscious parts of you that don't know they're part of you. They do not know they are a part of you, but they can feel the magnetism of their energy moving as you begin to call them in. And this is why you're rendezvousing with certain triggers, because in that trigger, you can find the sensation that will unlock the subconscious frequency to bring yourself back together. And where I highly recommend that we begin this week is with, I am disappointed and I am a disappointment, which is not true. So instead of using the I am there, I would prefer us to say, I feel disappointed and I feel like a disappointment. Now we're not identifying so much with something that's not true.